Stay tuned and let's take a look at this Marvel Legends Wolverine 50th Anniversary 2 pack with Patch and Joe Fix It. Pow and welcome back to the channel Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember now you can hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. Today, I have switched to the black background as we continue celebrating Wolverine's 50th anniversary with another Marvel Legends 2-pack. And it's definitely not Wolverine and Hulk, if you're asking. It is, of course, Patch and Joe Fixit in those dashing white tuxedos. Now, that is from the famous cover, but I will show you that on the back of the box. On the front, it reveals the two interchangeable heads, and they both come with a set of interchangeable hand. Nevertheless, it is the same Wolverine packaging we have been seeing with the 50 years logo on the top. On the back, you get that Marvel Legends variant cover, which will be available to buy at some point this year. So keep a lookout for that. The actual cover that these figures are in tribute to is down here. Once again, it doesn't actually tell you what it is, but I will. It is Wolverine number eight from 1989, that Chris Claremont story. We get the write up that says undercover as his alter ego patch, Wolverine cons Joe Fixer into helping him take down the Chrome Lords of Madripoor. Now, what is weird is that in the actual comic, you don't actually see them wearing these tuxedos. It is just for the front cover, but nevertheless, they look great. And now we have it in plastic forever for our Marvel Legends collection. Let's get them open. Here we have both Patch and Joe Fixit out of the packaging with their accessories either side of them. Looking very sharp in their bright white, shout out Robo, tuxedos. Now, can you guys keep a secret? Granted, there are a lot of clues out there, but yes, that is Wolverine and Bruce Banner, the characters you know and love, just using alter egos so they could go undercover to beat the bad guys. And surprisingly, it actually works. So now we have Patch and Joe fix it. Let me take their accessories away, get the tape measure out. You can see that Hulk, I mean, Joe fix it, is about eight and a quarter inches in height. And then Patch to the top of his pointy hair is about six inches. And to be fair, because Wolverine is a little bit shorter. It does make them scale very nicely. Now it is his anniversary. So let's of course look at Wolverine first. And let's start off by zooming in and taking a look at the head sculpts as they are a massive improvement compared to any previous patch head we have gotten. And we did get one, I think it was with the Riders Wave Wolverine. Even still, you can see the comparison on screen. It is night and day. The new one with the digital face printing tech is so much nicer compared to that old one. You may as well put that one in the bin. Now, back to this one you can see it's the angry expression head sculpt but you can still see his eye glaring at you with the very stern expression you've got the black sideburns going all the way around the hair sculpt is very nicely done in that jet black uh, with the pointy sort of points as well up top so yeah the head itself is also on a dumbbell joint so you do get your swivel left and right you get your bit of tilt and looking up and down so lots of range on the head sculpt but we do get this second head sculpt where he's in a little bit of a better mood i really like that little cheeky grin here you get with Wolverine is clearly one big on the roulette table or at blackjack or something but he's definitely a little bit happier here the hair sculpt is exactly the same all the way around with the patch over the eye of course but yeah it's just the expression is a little bit more happy if you will so comparing them side by side you can see you have the more stern sort of grumpy expression and then you've got the little bit more sure of himself a little bit of a smirk on Wolverine ahem, I mean patch so let me know in the comments below which one you prefer do you prefer for the stern or the little bit cocky. Continuing to look at Patch then, as I said, he's looking very smart in this white tuxedo. Now this jacket piece is an overlay, so there is an ab crunch under there, but it is very limited. But still, it's all about the aesthetics here. You've got the little black bow tie, the shirt with the buttons going down as well. Now the white outfit may be a little bit harsh on camera, but I assure you it looks very nice in hand. Completely pinless, double jointed elbows, completely pinless, double jointed knees with the black trousers down to the black shoes as well. I want to highlight though the claws as we do get a set of clawed hands of course for Patch as uh, he has the same powers of Wolverine believe it or not uh, and these are very nicely done. These are the better claws as well where they're a little bit more embedded in the hand, a little bit
bit thicker and they're just nicer overall. They definitely look better on display compared to some of those earlier Wolverine claws we've gotten. So yeah, he does look very nice with these sharp claws done in a little bit of a dark chrome sort of gunmetal gray. But we do get a set of, a set of interchangeable fisted hands for when he wants to go a little bit more incognito at the blackjack table. And this allows me to show off the articulation a little bit better. So the shoulders will go to 90. There is also a bicep swivel. And then as I've said, he's got the double jointed pinless elbows, which are done very nicely. Limited ab crunch as well underneath there, as this jacket is an overlay, but there is still a swivel there, as you can see. The legs will go up and the jacket is soft enough at the bottom to move out the way. There's also a thigh cut, and then you've got the double jointed pinless knees that bend just like so. Very nicely done. Again, black on black is never a good thing. Uh, and then you've got the shoes with the ankle pivot and rocker. Uh, so just standard Marvel Legends articulation. But for a guy in a tuxedo, I do think you're going to be able to get him posed up in the way you want to uh, for display. But it's all about the aesthetic here. It's about representing that iconic comic cover. And I think they do a pretty good job of that in plastic. Bravo. And as always, I could spend the next half an hour just going Going through Wolverine comparisons, but I will throw up a couple. Here we have the other two Wolverine packs I've reviewed on the channel so far with Brood Wolverine and Samurai Wolverine. And the advantage of Wolverine being on similar bodies means there's lots of head swap and potential. For example, here we have the Samurai head on the new tuxedo body in case he wanted to take his eye patch off. Yeah, he's got the blue in his hair, but it works fine. And this image alone just goes to show how spoiled we are for Wolverines in the Marvel Legend line. This isn't even all of them. This is just a handful. There are plenty missing on the table and we know there are more to come. I've seen a comment on my channel recently that sums it up perfectly. For every person that doesn't want another Wolverine, there is somebody that does. As there are still variant costumes and different versions of Wolverine we are yet to have in Marvel Legends form. So expect more to come. We know we have more Wolverines coming this year alone. So you let me know your favorite Marvel Legends Wolverine in the comments below and is there a version of Wolverine they have yet to done that you actually still want? Let us know. Moving on to Joe Fix It in the old school Hulk Grey. Again you get two head sculpts. This first one a little bit more neutral that sort of stern expression. You can see the creases in the face and a little bit of wash in there as well to bring out that sculpt to detail. Again really nice head sculpt of an old school style Hulk head. You've got the short black hair with a little bit of blue highlights in there as well going all the way around with that sort of bowl haircut if you will. The head itself is on a dumbbell joint, so you do get your swivel, a little bit of tilt, uh, and a little bit of up and down as well, but you've got the bow tie there to restrict the head looking down. But even still, a nice sort of stern expression. You also get an angry Joe Fix-It expression. Someone has stepped on this man's toe, and he is not happy about it. But he's got the open mouth expression with the shiny white teeth. You've got the red tongue behind it. You've still got the really nice sculpt and crease work in the face with the black wash to bring out the details. The piercing green eyes and even the hair scope is a little bit different. It's a little bit more frazzled but it still has the blue sort of dry brushing to bring out the scope to detail but yeah all the way around looking really really nicely done. A lot more expressive this head scope is and again you've got the same articulation as well on the dumbbell with a little bit of swivel rotation and up and down. So if you compare the two you have your options for display. You have your stern grumpy looking Hulk. I mean Joe Fix It compared to your much more angrier emotional Joe Fix It head sculpt. Let me know your favorite in the comments. In regards to the rest of the figure, it is very much what we have gotten before with the previous versions of Joe Fix It, but the character design is enough of a change for me to justify the release because for me, this is the Joe Fix It I wanted on my display. Maybe just because of that cover, I don't know, but for whatever reason, I wanted the white tuxedo, and that's exactly what we now have. But the figure we have technically already have before, as it is just a lot of reuse with a few little tweaks. The arm are the same, the legs are the same, the jacket has been tweaked slightly and I suppose the body underneath that jacket is the same but now he has a bow tie instead of a regular tie. So you know what to expect, you've got the shoulders that go up not to 90 but you've got the single joints on the elbows, single joints on the knees, same shoes, same legs that we've got before and again the jacket even though there is a button undone it is glued so you're not undoing that so whatever articulation is under there, I'm assuming an ab crunch, you're not going to be able to utilize it. It's a shame that this figure doesn't have 
have the butterfly joint so you can actually do the arms crossed pose, but I suppose we can try and do that in a minute. Out of the box, he comes with a set of fisted hands. There are some sculpted details on the white jacket that we've seen before with the pockets and the collar, etc. The bow tie is a nice touch with the shirt buttons being done up all the way down as well. And then the trousers are done in like more of a, a navy than it is a straight up black because the shoes are a glossy black, but then the, the trousers are actually more of a dark, dark blue. But still, it is looking very nice and is accurate to the character design, which is what's most important. In regards to interchangeable hands, he doesn't exactly come with a full set. He has one open palm grabby hand, and then the other hand is a trigger finger that we have gotten on some of the previous versions of Joe Fixit, so we can hold his weapons. So it isn't exactly a whole set of hands, but you do get a couple of posing options for sure for your Joe Fixit. I would have rather an actual set of these grabby expressive hands rather than including the trigger hand without a weapon to hold, but, th but that's just me personally. Either way, not many accessories. Here we have him compared to the original Joe Fixit Builder figure, which is technically based off the game of her. So I actually never brought the single release, which is more of a comic version, but that's just a repaint of this one anyway. So this is the original version of Joe Fixit we got in the recent Marvel Legends line, but technically game of verse Joe Fixit. So you can see the similarities here as they are basically the same figure, the same shoes, same legs, same arms, same fisted hands. The jacket is slightly different. That one's got a pocket square, that one doesn't. And I'm sure this is just a tie and a bow tie on the same actual base body underneath. So yeah, very similar to what we have already gotten in the Legends line. But for whatever reason, the bow tie is my mind's eye. We have of course had a couple of versions of Grey Hawk in the Marvel Legends line, but this is the most recent. This is the one that came packed with Bruce Banner during the Avengers 60th anniversary line. And again, this is very nice, but it is a little bit taller than your Joe Fixit as that base body is a little bit shorter. But they are both grey hawks, both got the blue highlights in the hair. So let's try a little head swap. Now the bodies are different, which means the pegs are different. So it doesn't actually fit on there snugly. And now he has no neck, but he is the big hawk. So I suppose that's fine. So you can sort of make it work if you get some blue tack under there, but it doesn't technically pop on the head as they have different ball joint sizes underneath. But I guess you could still make it work for poses or pictures. Now I tried, but unfortunately you can't accurately recreate that cover with these figures as neither of them have butterfly joints to allow you to get the crossed arms poses. I did try and do the cross legs look for Wolverine though, but again, you can't get his arms further enough across. So it's all about the essence, the tribute, if you will, uh, of that cover, but not 100% accurate to pose up in figure form, but it's close enough, isn't it? Again, for whatever reason, my mind's eye of Joe Fix It and Patch is always going to be this white tuxedo look. So I am happy to have them in plastic and I will find a place for them on the display for sure. But it was close, but not quite there. Jumping into comparisons, here we have a couple of the females from the previous Wolverine two packs. We have Lady Mandarin herself, Psylocke, and then the Empress, the Shi'ark Empire, none other than Lalandra. For no particular reason, staying in the Shi'ark world, we have Vulcan and Gladiator. As we're all on a bit of an X-Men 97 hype at the minute, here we have the recent Wolverine and Cyclops. And since we have the black background out, here we have a couple of characters wearing all white. It is the Emma Frost from the Hellfire Club box set and the House of X Magneto. Here we have the extremist armor Iron Man and the ultimate Captain America. And at least according to the MCU, this one runs Madripoor since that's where Patch and Joe fix it are running around. Now I know she doesn't really, but we are due a new version of Sharon Carter in that Shield free pack, which will be a massive upgrade to this version here. And talking of the MCU, here we have those Deadpool legacy figures. It is of course Wolverine and Deadpool, but the non-legacy versions. And if you have seen that Deadpool trailer, there is definitely a patch easter egg and in case you were curious yes you can pop on the Hugh Jackman head sculpt onto this patch body and it sort of works you know it's not too bad he's a little bit shorter than Wolverine which isn't accurate to live action but the head pops on this body and it would work for some pictures, undoubtedly. But of course, let's wrap up with some of the Who crew. So here we have Frogman, Tigra, and Joe Casta, who's reading out comments from the previous Marvel Legend review. Leave a comment on this video, and she may read yours out on the next one. Who have you picked today? Mulritz182 says, I love how Wolverine is playing second fiddle in almost all of these anniversary two packs, LOL. And then of course, last but not least, it is of course Captain Britain. And how? Fire. Hank. <laughs> 
final thoughts on this Marvel Legends Wolverine 50th Anniversary 2-Pack with Patch and Joe Fix-It. Now, you know what you get yourself in for if you buy this set. Not the most articulated of Marvel Legends as their attire is restricting. They are very sharply dressed though, mind you. But it is a beautiful representation of that Wolverine cover from 1989. And for whatever reason, they will forever be my mind's eye of Patch and Joe Fix-It. So I'm personally very happy to have that represented in plastic for my collection. And they're going to stand out amongst the shelf of superheroes. As I said, they're very formally dressed. But you let me know what you think in the comments below. Did this set interest you at all? Or was this one that you could just skip on, walk on by? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But if you like Marvel Legends, one thing is for sure, you are in the right place. Check out the videos tab, find the playlist. But most importantly, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Hit all in the notification bell. Don't miss out on the video. And please hit that join button. Become a channel member if I show some love or join the members club much much appreciated as always shout out to legendsverse.com links will be in the description but you can find me on instagram at it's dan who and i'm on twitter or x i refuse to call it x at dan who reviews and until then people my name is dan w and i'll of course see you on the next one